हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम क्लाउड सोल्यूशन आर्किटेक्ट एट माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एंड माई एम इज टू एम्पावर एवरी सिंगल पर्सन टू बेटर एट टेक्निकल इंटरव्यूज कीपिंग विद दैट गोल इन माइंड टू डी वी आर गोइंग टू डो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लीड कोड प्रॉब्लम कॉल्ड वैलिड सुडोक नाउ इफ यू सी सम ऑफ द पॉपुलर कंपनीज हु ऑलरेडी आज दिस क्वेश्चन देर आर कंपनीज लाइक एमेजॉन एप्पल एन मीडिया ऊबर माइक्रोसॉफ्ट फेसबुक गूगल ब्लूमबर्ग डो डैश गोल्डमैन सेक्स एंड स्नैपचैट सो दैट्स वाई आई एम पेइंग माई एट मोस्ट अटेंशन आई होप यू ऑल्सो एंजॉय द वीडियो so this is a lead code medium problem and also very well like problem on lead code in this problem basically we are given a 9 cross 9 sudoku board and we need to determine that whether this given sudoku board if that is valid or not now uh, we are told that only filled cells needs to be validated according to following rules and the, we are given three rules to determine that whether the board is valid or not first rule dictates that each row must contains the digits between 1 to 9 without repetition this is the key phrase that there should not be any duplication first uh, rule defines that every single row must have unique characters from 1 to 9 second row defines that every single column must have unique characters between 1 to 9 the third definition shows that uh, the box of 3 by 3 or the sub boxes in the grid must contains the digit 1 to 9 without repetition so this is little bit tricky one but basically uh, amongst the 9 by 9 box we can make nine different 3 by 3 boxes where the values 1 to 9 should be present without any repetition now we are told that the sudoku board in this case is partially filled and we need to only check the boards uh, based on the filled items nothing more than that so if it could be possible that we cannot be able to complete the entire sudoku but given the filled elements if they are at least behaving these three definitions that are mentioned where every single row every single column and every single box they all should have 1 to 9 unique elements then we can determine that this sudoku board is valid if it is not the case then we can determine that this is not valid so if we take a look at this particular example this is the example of a valid sudoku box and what makes this sudoku box valid is that that every single row or all amongst all the nine rows the filled elements are filled in a manner that there is no repetition between 1 to 9 now if we just see take one example say for example for this first particular row if i add one more 5 over here then it make it completely makes this sudoku board invalid because the elements 5 is repeated two times in this particular row we are not concerned with the empty cells because we can determine that that can have any particular value but if there is a 5 or any duplication present over here we can determine this to be invalid but let's just say that 5 is not present over here so we are good same way if i just put an 8 over here in this middle portion then this column would be invalid and uh, that would make this entire sudoku box invalid so that is also one more thing that we need to take care of and the third and little bit more complicated thing is the boxes that we need to be concerned with in this case so there as we can see from this image there are actually nine boxes present in any given sudoku board and we need to determine that 1 to 9 values are uh, remain non duplicated for all of them so basically say for an example for this particular box now this box currently only has one value 6 which means this this box is valid because there is no duplication but if i add one more 6 over here which means then then the 6 is repeated two times so that would make it invalidated so basically we need to take care of rows we need to take care of columns and we need to take care of boxes for this particular problem to solve them basically i'm going to show you three different solutions one for the row one for the column one for the boxes and then we will find a way to combine all three of them so say for example this is the row we are given right now we are only considering one row for now because same solution can be applied to all the remaining nine rows so that is a trivial fact so basically first we will try to determine suppose this is the row we are given what is our objective our objective is to make sure that all the filled values over here they are unique between 1 to 9 and there is no repetition so the simplest way to do is is to create a hash set so if i create a hash set currently this hash set is empty maximum possible length this can have is going to be 9 because there are only 9 cells in any given row okay now the logic we are going to use is that first we are going to iterate over the row if the value there is some value we will try to first check that whether that value is present in the hash set or not if it is not present then we will add that particular value in the hash set and move on to the next element 
if the value is already present which means that there is a duplication we find and then we can simply return false that this given sudoku board is invalid so let's try to do that first we will have we are at position number one currently there is nothing in the hash set so there is because there is no value we will add entry one over here and we can determine that this node has been visited or this cell has been visited for the row perspective and there is nothing wrong we find now this one is a dot so if there is a dot or if there are no values we can simply skip over that because that is none of our concern we are only concerned with the elements that are already filled now the next element is 3 so we will add an entry 3 over here because 3 was already not present this one is again empty this one is value number 6 so we will add 6 over here and then same we will add 2 over here and these two cells are not empty so we have reached to the end of the row which means we can determine that this particular row is currently valid and there are no issues with that but say for an example for this last cell rather than uh, adding this value if we had one more value number 3 over here then what would happen once at this position when we add value number 2 over here now we are over here this one is a filled value because this is a filled value we will try to see that whether this value is present in the hash set or not since this value is already present this is a big no no and we found a duplicated entry which means immediately we can call this entire sudoku board invalid because we find an in invalid row so that is how we are going to determine the rows now currently this one only had one row so we use just one single hash set say for an example we were dealing with nine different rows if that was the case what we would have to do is we would simply have to create nine different hash sets and uh, basically for every single hash set we are going to repeat the same process so this is just repeating the same process for different set of inputs uh, if the given sudoku board is let's say 16 by 16 we would have uh, like uh, had 16 hash sets but still the core concept would remain same now this the way we've solved for the box the same way we can actually solve for the columns again for the columns we are also going to create a hash set so say for an example this is the column we will create the hash set and we will repeat the same logic so currently this value number one is not present we will add value number one over here this three is not present we will add three same way we will add six and we will add two and now we are at the end of this column and we didn't find any duplicated entries so we can uh, say that this particular column is valid and then we can move on to the next two column and same way for the next column we would create a new hash set and if any point in time we find duplicated entries so say for an example for the second column we have two values one and one over here first we would add this one over here then the moment we move on to the next value and we see that hey in the hash set one is already present we can say that okay this particular column is invalid and that is why this entire sudoku board is invalid so this is also a very simple thing to understand same logic we are using what we use for rows we are going to use for the columns the thing is for the box now for the box this is a matrix kind of a structure okay and for the matrix kind of structure again our main logic or the thing we need to achieve is going to remain the same that we need to make sure that there are no duplicated entries for the filled values between 1 to 9 so again even for the box we would be able to create a simple matrix or a, or a simple hash set now for this even hash set we are going to apply the same logic and we would keep adding the entries uh, until we find any duplicate entries and if we find duplicate entries we will call it invalid so this is a very simple thing to do but the tricky part is okay now say for an example we need to determine for rows and columns okay currently say for an example we are just ignoring the boxes for now we are only considering that how to solve this problem for just row and columns and we need to find that we don't find any duplication between 1 to 9 for every single row and every single column how we are going to achieve that we are going to achieve that in the same manner I explained earlier the only logic we are going to use is is that we are going to create nine hash sets for rows okay so for rows we are going to create nine hash sets every single row we are going to check for the duplicated entries if we find any duplication we can return invalid immediately if we don't find the duplication we will move on to the next row and we will keep on repeating the same process the same thing we are going to use for the columns as well that even for the columns we are going to create nine hash sets so uh, again and we are going to repeat the same process to check that whether there are any duplicated entries or not and since there are none in this particular case we can simply in the end return the answer valid now remember we only solve this problem for the rows and columns okay but the thing is we need to take care of the boxes as well now for the boxes there is just one tricky part 
and the tricky part is that actually for the boxes it is not as simple as the, just the correlation between row and column uh, because for rows we had the particular separate entries for every single row that we can traverse over them or determine them pretty easily even for the columns we have the direct way to identify that whether this is a column or not but when it comes to the boxes we need to establish a correlation between the set of uh, different rows and different columns and how would we be able to achieve that okay so even for the boxes basically we need to create nine hash sets but the thing is how do we define which number goes where so basically these are going to be all the boxes that we need to create okay and these are the nine boxes but the thing is how do we able to define the nine boxes the answer is quite simple we are actually going to do a division by three for any particular row value and any particular column value so that would be a very clear indicator on what box we need to choose and let me give you a quick demo so basically the idea is that okay currently this row position is 0 1 and 2 okay now say for example if we do like 0 divided by 3 what is the value we are going to get 0 of course if we do like uh, 1 divided by 3 what is the value we are going to do we are actually going to consider the floor value okay not the ceiling value so if we consider the floor value 1 divided by 3 is going to be like 0 0.33 so basically in the integer it is going to be 0 so these three values are going to represent 0 same way these three values are going to represent 0 which means if we are iterating over any of these cells we can say that we need to consider box number 0 for that so that is pretty good same way if we are going over any other these three or these three values so okay this is going to be 1 1 and 1 because if we divide them divide them by 3 and same way this is going to be 1 1 1 uh, if we divide them by 3 uh, same way this is going to be 2 2 2 and same way this is going to be 2 2 2 now say for example we are at any cell amongst this particular box now we need to identify that which particular hash set to select now this one is going to be box number 6 so hash set number 6 we need to select okay but how do we define this hash set number 6 is going to be the correct one and this is where we are going to use this formula where for any particular cell position we are going to do this formula where we are doing row divided by 3 plus we are doing 3 and plus we are doing column divided by 3 okay so this is the formula we are going to use to determine that what is the correct correct box number now suppose for this particular formula suppose we are at this particular uh, box or this particular cell okay now if we take a look at this particular cell currently the row is going to be uh, row number 4 okay row is 4 and currently the column position is going to be 7 let's apply this particular formula for this row and column position if we do that we are going to do 4 divided by 3 plus 3 plus 7 divided by 3 okay so in this case 4 divided by 3 is going to give us the answer number 1 plus 3 and plus 7 divided by 3 is going to give us the answer 2 if we do some of these three values we are going to value we are going to get the value of 6 and the 6 is going to determine that the box currently if we are at this particular position we need to check it against hash set number 6 this is the only complicated matter for this particular question if you are able to identify a way to find the correct box then this is a very simple problem to solve and which we just did so this is the whole logic and basically now we know that how we are going to solve for row plus column plus box the idea is that for row we are going to use nine hash sets for column we are going to use nine hash sets and even for boxes we are going to use nine hash sets and uh, we already know how to determine what is the correct box we need to look at and based on that we simply need to check for the duplicated entries if we find any duplication we simply get rid of it if we don't find any duplication awesome then we can conclude this given sudoku to be valid and this is the whole optimal solution now if we see time and space complexity for this one the time complexity is actually obviously going to be we go of n square uh, and why n square because we are given n to be same for both rows and columns so that is why this is going to be big of n square if we see space complexity now this one is like a debatable question 
because we already know that we are going to use 27 additional hashtags the thing is why did we come up with this number 9 because the we are given n is equal to 9 by 9 matrix so we are given n is equal to 9 so that is why this 9 came in so basically space complexity is going to be big of 3n so in general we can write this to be big of n but if we are explicitly told that we are only going to use uh, 9 uh, boxes then we can also conclude this to be a finite number and this could also be considered as co constant so if you do this discussion with your interviewer you are going to look very uh, clear in your concepts regarding time and space complexity since this is already pretty long video and the coding is just a bunch of repetition so i am just going to explain you the code and then i am going to paste this in the comments so you can check it out from there so first of all we are going to create an array of hash sets uh, so first we are going to create an array for row second we are going to create for column and third we are going to create for the boxes uh, and the size of this particular array is going to be uh, the size of 9 uh, that is given over here and we are hard coding this value because uh, we are basically told that this is going to be a 9 cross 9 pseudocode. Now, after filling these values, we simply need to initiate the hash set for every single one of them. So, we are going to just iterate over all the values and we are going to initiate, initiate the hash set to accept the character as the input. Now, we are going to run two loops. Uh, first is to iterate over the row and second one is to iterate over the column and using the two inner loops like one inside the other we would be able to iterate over the given input matrix now the moment we are iterating over the given input matrix first of all we are going to determine that what is the current character at any particular position or any particular cell now if the value is, is dot or if there is no value we can simply continue and move on to the next element but if there is a value we are simply going to first do these things first we are going to check that whether for this particular row or uh, hash set is this value already present if the value is already present we can simply return false if that is not present we are going to add the value to that particular row hash set same thing we are going to do for the column that if the value is present we are going to return false if the value is not present we are going to add that value to that particular uh, subsequent columns hash set and then we are going to apply our formula where we are going to uh, check for the particular box and then we are going to check that for that particular box if the value is present we are going to return false if it is not present we are going to return the subsequent correct value and basically if we get out of the loop we are simply going to return true that we did not find any place uh, where there was invalidity and we could have written false so now let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs decently fast compared to a lot of other solutions in, so in terms of time complexity and also it is very convenient in terms of space complexity so i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there also at the same time if you want to check all the solutions that i have done so far i have created a public github repository where i'm putting all all of my answer and this is going to be a great resource for anyone who is trying to prepare for different tech interviews so i would be pasting this link in the comments as well so you can check it out from there thank you